Okay guys, welcome to Engineers Academy. Now we are going to solve this problem from chapter 14, Hebler Dynamics. The problem says that block A has a weight of 60 pounds and block B has a weight of 10 pounds. Determine the speed of block A after it moves 5 feet down the plane starting from rest. So the initial velocity of that block A is 0. And similarly the initial velocity of that block B will also be equal to 0. So it is said that neglect friction and the mass of the card and pulleys. So first of all, we have to develop the relationship between the velocity of block A and the velocity of block B that we have learned in the chapter 12, that is the kinematics. So for that, we will define our datum line. So let's say this is my datum line for block A and this is my datum line for block B. So if it is moving in the downward direction, let's say this is my positive uh, displacement for the block A and let's say that displacement is represented by SE and the displacement of this block B is represented by this line and this is the positive direction of the displacement of that block B. So now if we write the equation for the length of this uh, chord, so we can write that this is 2SA, let mm -hmm. me write that this will be 2SA, this length will remain constant. So 2SA is 1SA then second SA plus SB and this is equal to the length of the chord. Now if I take the derivative of this with respect to time, so then this will be 2DSA divided by DT plus DSB divided by DT and the derivative of that constant length with respect to time will be equal to 0 since the rope length remains constant. So this is 2VA plus Vb and this is equal to 0. So from this we can say that Vb equals to minus 2Va. So now if we if Va goes downward that is in the positive direction of Sa then B goes upward and its velocity is in the opposite direction of that uh, block A. So the minus sign represents that when one block is moving downward, the other block is going to move up. So this is the relationship between the velocity of B and the velocity of block A. Now if we apply the work energy principle, so for work energy principle we have to apply, we have to consider both the blocks, right. So initially at state 1, let's say that the, let me write that this is the kinetic energy of block A, the initial kinetic energy of block A plus the initial kinetic energy of block B plus the summation of, uh, of the work done of all the external forces from state 1 to state 2, right? And this will be equal to the kinetic energy at state 2 of block A plus the kinetic energy at state 2 for block B. Since initially when this block A is here, both are at rest, when this block A moves downward somewhere here, this block B will move up. So it will reach somewhere here, let's say. So that will be the second state of block A and block B. This is the initial state and this is the second state when this block B will move up. Now as we know that initially both are at rest, so the kinetic energy T1A and T1B both are 0. So we can add that is 0 plus 0. The weight of block A is going to do work. Let me write that the, let me write here that U of uh, the work done due to the weight of A, let's say, plus the work done due to the weight of B, right? So this will be equal to T2A or let me write this as 1 divided by 2 and the mass of uh, block A is since the weight of block A is 60, so the mass will be 60 divided by 32.2 into, let me write that that will be V2A and plus is squared and similarly this will be 1 divided by 2 and the weight of block B is 10 pounds, so this is 10 divided by 32.2 into the velocity V2 of block B squared. 
So now the work done due to the weight of block A. So the work done due to the weight of block A will always be equal to the weight of block A times the change in vertical position from 1 to 2. So if this block A uh, travels 5 feet along the plane like this, so in the vertical direction the change in its position is the perpendicular of this triangle. If this is 5 so according to this triangle if this if it travels 5 feet then it need to travel 3 feet right in the vertical direction so now the change in the vertical direction is 3 so i can write that the weight of block a is 60 into 3 now the work done due to the weight of block b is let's say u w b and this will be equal to the weight of block b so the weight of block b is 10 multiply by the change in the vertical position of block B. So we have to find the SB, the distance traveled by block B in the upward direction. So then again we have to find the relationship between the distance traveled by SA to the distance traveled by that block B. From the second equation I can write that if I multiply this whole equation with GT so we will be left with 2 DSA plus DSB equals to 0. So this is the change in the displacement, right? So we can write that 2 dSA is equal to minus dSB. So now if, if SA moves 5 feet downwards along the plane, so then we can write that, let me write here that 2 dSA minus dSB. So then dSB the change in the position of block B will be equal to if I multiply both sides by minus so this will become minus this is minus and this is the change in SA is 5 feet this is given so this is 10 so the change in SB is equal to minus 10 feet so if it goes downward then block B will will move up so that is minus 10 feet so now again I can write that the work done due to that block B is 10 and the change in y so the change in y is that dsb the change in the position of block b so when this block a moves 5 feet downwards then this block b moves 10 feet upwards right so i will write 10 and as we know that the weight is acting vertically downward and the block is moving up so the direction of the weight and the distance traveled or the displacement traveled is in the opposite direction so it is the negative work so this means that this is minus 10 into 10 so this is minus 100 pound feet or feet pound right so let me write that this is feet pounds so now i can put all those values here in this work energy principle so this is a plus the work done due to the weight of block a is 60 into 30 16 to 3 so this is 180 minus this 100 this will be 30 divided by this 60 will divide by 2 is 30 divided by 32.2 and this is the velocity of uh, at stage 2 of block a square plus this will be 5 divided by 32.2 and as we know that the velocity of block b has a relationship with block a like this so we can write that this is i can write this as minus 2 v2 of block a square so this we can find we can add up both of these right so from this i can write that this is 30 divided by 32.2 plus and this this will become uh, plus 4 so let me multiply it with 4 and this will become like this so this is 20 divided by So 20 divided by 32.2 and we can write this, we can take this common now, right? So this is V2, the velocity of block A at stage 2 squared, right? So this is 180 minus 100, so this is 80 and we can simplify this, this is 30 divided by 32.2 plus 20 divided by 32.2 this gives me 1.553 1.553 v2 a square 80 
and now if I divide both side by that 1.553 so that will give us the the velocity of block A at stage 2 and if I take the square root so we will get that velocity this is 80 divided by 1.553 so that is the V2 7.18 feet per second. So now when the block A moves, uh, travels a distance of 5 feet along the plane, so its velocity uh, at the end of that 5 feet will be equal to 7.18 feet per second. And similarly, if you want to find the velocity of block B, so that will be twice the velocity of block A, but in the negative direction of SB, right? So that will be B will be equal to minus 2 times that velocity of A. So that is minus 2 into 7.18. So if we multiply that, multiply by 2, that is 14.35. So when this block A covers a distance of 5 feet, it will last at the end of 5 feet travel will be 7.18 feet per second and this block B will move up. And that block B will move 10 feet distance, right? If it moves 5, it will move 10 feet in the upward direction. And when it covers 10 feet distance, its velocity will be equal to uh, twice the velocity. And that twice velocity is 14.355 feet per second. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope it will help you in your learning. Also like this video if you people want me to continue this effort of solving Hepler dynamics problems.